with uh, getting involved in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Um, and just like, what's your background? Okay, okay. Um, I mean, my background is is really in action sports, um, action sports, and and marketing oneself as an athlete. That's that's where, where most of my background is. Um, you know, that's how I got my start with learning how to do social media marketing because I was riding bikes professionally. So, you know, we were always producing content for YouTube and Facebook and different social networks so that we could get our names out there and stuff. And, um, you know, I was living in Hollywood at the time, hustling a lot of commercial work, stunt work, things like that. And then um, I, I wanted, uh, I, I discovered this thing called residual income from doing commercials. Um, because, you know, when you do a union commercial, they pay you over and over again every single time the commercial airs. And, um, you know, my parents never taught me about residual income. My teachers at school never taught me about residual income. They were always like, get a job. And uh, I, so I, I started getting paid to ride my bike. I started making residuals off commercials. And I was like, man, this is way freaking better than a, a job. You know, like, <laughs> what, are, what are other ways I can make residual income? Eventually, you know, I started looking into other ways to make residual income. So, uh, so that, that led me to, to learning about network marketing companies and, um, like royalties and how, uh, like webs, you know, building like, like social media followings and stuff like that could, could create multiple streams of residual income for different products and services. Uh, so, you know, I, I got into like sales and marketing a little bit. Um, I got into the, the network marketing stuff, building affiliate programs, and then, one of the affiliate programs that I was involved in was, um, it was, I was an affiliate for advertising services, online advertising services, um, you know, pay-per-click ads, banner ads, text ads, things like that. You know, when you're scrolling down the newsfeed on Facebook and you see like, um, like a sponsored ad that, that goes through or that, okay, that's the kind of stuff I was getting into selling. And I was getting paid uh, commissions in the, with PayPal. You know, everyone was using PayPal. And uh, what happened with PayPal was that people were having major issues with this, this payment processor. They were freezing people's accounts. Um, you know, they have high fees on top of it. Uh, I mean, there were companies that had millions and millions of dollars frozen in their PayPal funds for up to 180 days. PayPal, would, PayPal can freeze anyone they want for any reason they want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if all of a sudden you're a business and you're using PayPal and you make and you're really successful and you make a ton of money, you'll show up on their algorithm and they're going to be like, oh, how, how did this person make all that money? Maybe they're doing something illegal. Let's freeze their account for 180 days. And what, who, who knows what they do with that money when they freeze your account? Do they take it and invest it somewhere and earn interest off it and then release it back to you? I don't know, but it's very possible. I wouldn't be surprised because uh, when you're a, a centralized private uh, processing company like that you can do whatever you want yeah so that was a major issue with these payment processors like paypal uh so all of a sudden these advertising companies they all started switching over to bitcoin and then since i had built networks in these advertising companies of of customers and then the customers started using bitcoin i started getting commissions in the form of bitcoin so I say Bitcoin found me. Um, I, I, it was completely unintentional. So I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm getting commissions in this Bitcoin thing. Well, how do, I, how do I get this money? So I had to create a Bitcoin wallet. Yeah. So I created my Bitcoin wallet. I, I you know, started racking up some of these Bitcoins. And then at the time, Bitcoin was trading for around $450 a coin. This was back in like, like April, May, June of 2016 when I started getting these things. And then in June of 2016, Bitcoin value goes from $450 to $800 a coin. So I literally almost doubled my money just by keeping it in a Bitcoin wallet instead of in the bank or instead of in PayPal or in, instead of some centralized fiat money uh, store of value. So I was like, wow, this is freaking awesome. Like everyone needs to do this. Like this is way better, you know? Like this is like some, one of the things that I was looking for, you know? And then I started learning more about it. Oh, it's decentralized. The governments can't control it. Um, you know, it has the potential to undermine everything these governments are doing with how they collapse economies and, and manipulate economies. And um, they fund every world war through, through control of these centralized um, banking systems where they print out fiat money. Um, you know, I learned about all that stuff long, long ago. I learned about the, the bankers, the Illuminati, the bloodlines from a very young age because I had access to the Internet and I knew how to use it. Yeah. So uh, I already was like, OK, that's fucked up shit, you know, like. 
I, I've always like subconsciously been looking for something to undermine what they do. And then it found me. Yeah. Bitcoin, decentralized money. They don't control it. They can't freeze it. They can't seize it. I can send money anywhere to anyone in the world. There's nothing they can do to stop that transaction from happening right now. So um, ever so I, after, after that, that doubling of the value, um, I, I've just been all in, you know, I've kind of been like one of those people that just took the torch and, and ran with it. You know, yeah. I've been, my, I started doing trainings on how to create the wallets, um, how to, how to trade the markets and, and play the system to your advantage, you know, how to get your money out of the bank into Bitcoin. Um, you know, all that stuff is, is kind of what I've been doing. I'm, I'm trying to help transition people from this old archaic corrupt uh, monetary system into a newer, better one that's decentralized and for the people. Yeah, man. It just sounds like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's what's up. Uh, what, I mean, what do you think uh, the future, what do you think the future is going to bring? Um, oh man, okay, that's, that's a tough one because um, it's the market itself is so volatile. Um, I mean, we see, we've seen, Bitcoin literally go from like 5,000 a coin down to 4,000 a coin back up to 5,000 a coin. Um, and there's right now there are big banks and governments that are purposely uh, doing things, creating propaganda and trying to pass legislation to fluctuate the, the value of Bitcoin so they can buy in at a lower price. Yeah. Okay, that's happening right now. Um, uh, who, who knows what else might happen? I mean, we may see Bitcoin go to, go to 20,000 a coin, 50,000 a coin, a hundred thousand a coin. We were, it's like, it's completely, um, you know, uncharted territory. We have no idea how, how big this thing can grow. Um, and for anyone who's new, who may be new to Bitcoin, there is a limited supply of these things. Um, th there's th this process uh, to confirm the transactions called mining. And when you mine these things, when you confirm transactions, it creates more all the way up until the whole supply is, uh, is, is finished. The 20 more, there's 21 million in the supply. Um, about three quarters of them have been mined up. Um, and that's created a deflationary effect. And still barely, barely anyone in the world even knows about this stuff. But yeah. we're starting to see the beginning signs of global adoption. You know, um, we're starting to see... Uh, business owners with signs in their windows that say Bitcoin accepted here. There's Bitcoin ATM machines popping up all over the world. Um, you know, you're starting, uh, there, there's all these other cryptocurrencies now that have came out that are like Bitcoin and some are a little different. Some are, there's even other ones that are offering programmable money, like smart contracting into the money, like Ethereum. Um, so there's this whole new um, monetary system that's evolving from this, this technology. Absolutely. And, and we have n no idea, I mean, the, I the implications that it, that it could have or how it's gonna change the world. All I, all, all I do know is that it's going to be very, very impactful, very, very significant. And uh, almost as like, like back how in like the, the 60s and 70s when like credit cards were just kind of starting to get introduced. Like think about how, how impactful credit cards and payment processing with, with credit cards has, has become throughout the world, okay? Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is even more crazy than that. It's more disruptive. It's more revolutionary. Uh, so, you know, we may see a time where banking and uh, centralized payment processing becomes obsolete. You know, Bitcoin has the potential to do to banks what email did to the postal service or what file sharing did to the music industry or what Airbnb did to hotels or what Uber has done to taxis, but more disruptive than all those things combined. Because now you're, you're, you're taking a technology that's disrupting um, the, 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 very the, the, the very entity that is trying to dominate and control the world. You're disrupting that. So it's who knows what, what could happen with this. What do you hope? Um, what I hope is that everyone wakes the fuck up and boycotts the United States dollar. Yeah. Completely transitions because... It's no, like, it's pretty obvious now, you know, anyone with half a brain can go and take advantage of the information abundance that we have available to us via, via the internet and or just ordering books on, on, online. And you can read about how the world is really controlled and who manufactures all the world wars, who manufactures the, the economic collapses, who manufactures all these horrible things that happen on this planet. It's all done through centralized banking cartels that control the money. 
So, man, you know what is the last uh, topic I wanted to talk to you about, but it, you've already kind of opened that door is um, I know that you're big into like uh, aliens and you're big into like, um, um, uh, you know, a kind of out there type of stuff. And I am too. What do you think the chances are that the powers that be have completely manipulated the past? and what we know of it. Okay, um, in my opinion, because this is a rabbit hole that I've been going down for many, many years. I've been studying it. I've ordered tons of books about this. I binge watch everything about it from every whistleblower to every researcher. Um, ba based off all the data that I've gone through, um, what I believe is that our, our past has, has basically been covered up by these powers that be. Um, because they don't want us to know where we came from or how we got to be in the in this human situation. They don't want us to know that because once we know know how that happened, we become em empowered. Okay, so they tried to make up these stories about this like evolution. Oh, we just evolved from apes, and this is the pinnacle of success and all this stuff. And um, you know what I believe is that um, there's been very highly advanced people on this planet for tens of thousands of years. Um, they had the ability to genetically modify people, um, and, and I believe that humans are just one of their products of a genetic experiment, and they created us very specifically the way that we are so that they could use us as a resource. And uh, this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years, in my opinion. Yeah. So where, where do you think, based off of your experience and your research, where do you think that those more advanced beings went? And why did they leave us here? Okay, you know, I don't think that they went anywhere. I think they're still here, but they operate in secret. Um, you know, I, I think that they used to be here, and they, they're, they're, there was, a, I think there was a civilization on this planet that was where, you know, everyone was here. Um, and, and there's a lot of mythology about this. You know, like if you start studying Greek mythology, if you start studying the, you know, the, the, the gods of Greek mythology, what you'll find is that, these were just people that lived here that were very highly advanced. They had technology that the other people didn't have. They may have even been um, a little bit different genetically. They may have been genetically more advanced. They had maybe a little bit bigger brains. Um, like, and, you can, and you can go and see all the uh, skeletons that they find with the elongated skulls. They find them all over the world, especially down in Peru. And there were beings walking around on this planet with brains that were twice as big as ours. And we have the skulls that, that prove it. Yeah. And if you even look at ancient Egyptian artwork, the pharaohs, the gods of Egypt were all depicted with these big, long, elongated skulls. So I think there were all kinds of different, uh, different strains of, of different strains of, of humanoids, you know, different, different, uh, just different kinds. You know, some of them may have been a little taller. Some of them may have been shorter. Some of them may have had like six fingers on one hand, stuff like that. You know, I think uh, the, this whole universe is just teeming with life. There's all kinds of different life forms all throughout the universe, on all the planets, everywhere. And, you know, we're just one of many different genetic experiments that's probably gone down in, in, this, in this universe. Hmm. Um, man, that's just really interesting stuff. You know, I sent you a video uh, a little while back from that guy who was studying the Mayan calendar, because I know that you went there recently. Um, Tell me what you think about this. The Mayan calendar talks, it's, it's different. They see time in cycles rather than linearly. Yeah. And their great cycle is, 20, is roughly 26,000 years, give or take. Do you, because something would have had to happen, something catastrophic that would have given someone an opportunity to recreate history. So do you think that something could have happened in the past that was catastrophic that, you know, maybe wiped out a large portion of the people of the humans on the planet and gave them an opportunity to, uh, to kind of rewrite history. Yeah, absolutely. And the most well-known, um, myth about that is the story of Noah's flood. Um, and, and, and you can go into any, any culture all around the world. Every single culture has a flood myth, huh. uh, every single one. Uh, so at, at one point, whether it was a pole shift or a meteor hit the planet, I don't know exactly how it happened, but it's very, it's pretty obvious that at some point, probably 10,000 years ago, maybe 12,000 years ago, you know, the exact date 
you, you'll get different, different dates from different people, but it was probably around 10,000 plus years ago. Something wiped out almost everything on this planet. And it was kind of like, like a reset. Uh, you know, everyone had to start over there. The, and then when that happened, I think there was a lot of breakaway civilizations. You know, the people with the technology boned the fuck out. They probably went to the moon, to Venus, some of these other planets. And maybe then they came back down after all the dust settled and started to help rebuild. Um, you know, and, and, and that's when you start getting back into like Greek mythology and, and how they, you know, the Greeks and all this stuff, they built statues of their gods, you know, like, um, like, like probably one of the, the more well-known ones that, that is known for teaching the people metallurgy and all that stuff is, um, is Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus. Okay. Um, and you know, that's, that's Greek, but the Romans, they, um, had their God, uh, which they called Mercury and Mercury was depicted the exact same symbolism as, as Hermes. Uh, so you got to think like, was this dude like really just a highly advanced guy that, um, it, that lived longer? I mean, even in his, in his book, um, the Emerald tablets, um, he claims that he had overcome death and he could extend his, his lifespan indefinitely. And he had mastered, uh, incarnation, you know, and I think that's just technology too, being able to incarnate into these avatars, you know, there's crazy, there's crazy documents out there about people having really, really crazy technology and understanding all this stuff about the way the human body works, how the, the consciousness incarnates in through the pineal gland. And, you know, a lot of stuff about genetic experiments and doing things like that. Um, you know, it's crazy once you start, uh, you know, once you get out of your, your, your mainstream indoctrination camps that, that are here in, in the United States, they call it public school. I call it an indoctrination camp. Yeah. Where you have to mindlessly regurgitate information without question. Um, once you break free of that and you start exploring what else is out there and, and start ordering the books off Amazon, start connecting with all these different researchers through social media, you're going to find that there is just an abundance of crazy stuff that you can learn about that uh, is mind blowing in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, that kind of brings me, this is the big dichotomy that I, that I deal with because I'm, I'm on the same page, 100%. But on the, other, on the other side, so we have one side where, you know, this, this past, what, is, what does our past really look like? You know, were there, you know, extraterrestrials? What happened to e Egyptian culture? All this type of stuff. But then on the other side, I have this idea that I literally create my own reality. That, that, that this reality that I live in is simply a figment or a projection of my own imagination. So even all of those stories that we're talking about are simply stories that somehow, or maybe they were even hardwired, installed into my DNA when I first came here, or I picked them up along the way or something like that to make the past seem real. Um, Cause I know that you're into like Joe Dispenza and stuff like that. And that's what he really talks about. You're the placebo you it's not when I talk about, cause I talk, I teach this stuff that you create your own reality. And I'm not talking about like fluffy, like the secret type stuff. I'm talking literally you create your own reality that we are living in a matrix and that, that this, this whole thing is just data. It's just energy. And it's, it's really not that my eyes aren't seeing anything. It's that my eyes are projecting. My mind is actually creating this reality that these, I can't see my own eyes unless I look into a mirror. Only you can see my eyes and only I can see yours projecting out. So this, this image that I have projecting, it's not real. It's a figment of my imagination. So if, if, cause that feels more real to me based on my experiences, that idea that I am literally creating my own reality and anything outside of my own reality is just unknown yet. So like you're talking about, there's other beings living on other planets and things like that. To me, that just doesn't make sense yet because I haven't been able to take my own being outside of this realm that I'm living in. And so I believe that as my consciousness evolves and advances, because I don't, I personally don't think that we're going to be taking rockets to the moon or rockets to Mars, like homeboy Elon Musk wants to. I think that we'll just be taking our consciousness and projecting our consciousness to the, to, to those places. 
And it's simply a game that we've been playing for eternity to just simply continue to evolve and to continue to play this game to just self-realize that I am God, I am the creator, and I'm just creating this game around me with these stories and all this stuff to simply self-realize that I am that. What do you think about that? Um, it, it's interesting that you bring that up about projecting the consciousness um, because there, there is um, you know, meditation techniques and things that you can learn about which uh, where they teach you what's called astral projection where you project your consciousness out of your out of your avatar body yeah and you can go to other places simply by by thinking about it yeah um and that's a, that's stuff that uh, goes way back to ancient egypt you know they're, they're all about um the 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 incarnation and and the soul and all that stuff um there's a lot of teachings about that it, you, the, the farther back you go the more teachings you'll find about that oh, wow um, i believe that um, but I, yeah, and then I think that too, that part of, uh, of, of us, uh, of this whole, um, the, this, this, the, these powers that be that are like trying to control everyone, I think also what they do is they're trying to suppress the evolution of human consciousness and suppress us from figuring out that we are um, these powerful beings that can, that can create our own realities, basically through our thought process and through our actions. Um, and then, you know, you get into stuff like, um, you know, like the law of attraction and the law of vibration and how the thoughts create reality and how we are a mirror or our outer world is a mirror of what goes on in our inner world. Uh, you know, if you look at the atoms that make up our body, all you're going to see, if you look at them from a microscope, all you're going to see is a bunch of little balls of energy vibrating. Uh, and if everything's vibrating, then, you know, you can, uh, you can, there's, there's different uh, techniques and things that people can practice to change the vibration of their body to help manifest different results in this world. So if we're all these powerful creators running around, you know, we're all um, collectively taking part in the creation of this reality. So if, if we come together as a collective consciousness, you know, we could create anything we want. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a, back in 2012, I was visiting some of my best friends in Maui uh, and we ended up doing just a shitload of mescaline <laughs> and uh, a lot the, I, we could feel uh, energy or actual beings in the room um, like Raiden from Mortal Kombat, you know, because I, I believe that there are people, there are immortal beings on the planet right now. I do too. I wouldn't be surprised one bit. Yeah. And so as I've kind of been on this journey for the past decade or so, because I believe in immortality. I believe that, you know, dying is just, a, it's a, again, it's a figment of your imagination. People choose to die. That's why they're like, oh, dude, this game is, I don't want to play this game for whatever reason. We don't know what's going on subconsciously within another person. I don't, I have no idea what's going on subconsciously in your being and vice versa. So let's look at old people. Old people, we lock them up in homes. Nobody goes and visits them anymore. Nobody gives them love anymore, so why would they want to play the game? So they're like, oh, yeah, I want to, I'm out. I'm done. They, they're, they have no purpose left in their life. And I've talked to this with other people, and they tell, well, you know, what about a baby? You know, and again, we don't know what's going on subconsciously. So a baby might be born into an environment where it's like, oh, man, this, this sucks. I want to get out. And so something happens because I don't believe in accidents. So I, I believe that all death is a choice and it's a creation of our own reality or our, of our own consciousness. So I do, I believe that, uh, that life is just con it, it's conscious evolution and that we have, we've taken that consciousness and we've projected it like a laser into these first person avatars simply for the purpose of evolution, evolving that, consciousness because every thought leads us to another thought and progressing on and on and on and so i almost think when i hear these stories of you know aliens and past civilizations and things like that i almost wonder in my mind because like you were saying that we we can't we've collectively come together and co-created this reality that we've lived in and we really don't know what is true from the past or not. So what we've done is we've created all these stories to try to figure it out. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. 
The only thing that matters is the here and now and what the possibility and what the potential of the future brings. Because I think that consciousness or energy has infinite potential. And so that being said is like I was saying, like me and you, you know, 10 years from now, 25 years from now, we might be just, just out in outer space, just projecting. I've had those experiences out in the jungles of Peru, drinking ayahuasca with shamans and just boom, man, you are, you're in the fucking universe, you know? Yep. It's crazy, so, crazy how plants are compatible with us to do that. Oh, absolutely. But, but. Is it really that, or are you giving yourself permission? You, what you're saying is that you are, you have 100% intention that I'm going to drink this drink. I'm going to take this pill, and I believe I'm going to have a certain effect. Yeah, it's, so it's you, create, <laughs> you create it. So I believe that in the future, that we won't, you won't need ayahuasca. You won't need those things. All you'll be able to do because as we progress, especially people like you and I, that we're seeking this knowledge because we've had certain experiences in our life that have kind of given us, opened that door to the rabbit hole. And we it's kind of shook in our, for me, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I grew up in a very, a Mormon culture, you know, black and white, where do this, you're going to heaven, do this, you're going to hell. So when I first, when I first smoked cannabis, that was the first thing. It like shook my, my reality stopped and it shifted in that moment. I can remember I had a quantum leap in my conscious evolution in that moment because I didn't smoke weed until I was 25 years old. So in that moment, my whole reality shifted and everything that I had been taught about reality and what reality is and what, what's going to happen about who I am where I came from and where I'm going in that moment, it all, I questioned everything. And then I started eating mushrooms and then just going down that rabbit hole and then questioning all that. So for me, as we progress down this timeline, we're going to realize we're going to, like you said, we're going to become more and more empowered to who we really truly are. We are infinite beings and we have infinite potential so in the future, man, I just think that we're going to be creating some fucking crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, I think the potential is definitely there, um, you know, but people just need to wake up a little bit and realize what, what, um, how powerful human consciousness really is. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I, and along those lines and what we've been talking about with, uh, you know, the powers that be, I think the powers that be are just outdated motherfuckers. They're running on Windows 95 <laughs> and they don't understand, nor do they want to understand, nor do they want to evolve their consciousness. So what they're doing, that's why they prohibited consciousness expanding things is because they control the game. They created the rules. They created the money. So they're rich. They, they're happy living in their ivory tower. And so they're afraid, they're more afraid than we are. They're terrified of losing control of what they've created over hundreds of years. Yep. And here's the thing, you can't stop evolution. You can take all your tanks, all your guns, all your military, all your power, and no matter how hard you try, if the ocean, wants to create a tsunami, it's going to just take, wipe that whole fucking thing out. So you can't stop the wave because that's what it is, just waves and cycles of time. And that's how evolution works, just waves and cycles. And so what I see with what's going on, what happened in uh, Vegas, what happened in 9-11, all these false flags that have happened forever every single war false flag 1913 with the invention of money all that stuff it's the end of a paradigm and a new paradigm is literally being created right now they talk about this in astrology i'm a big astrology nerd that you know the age of pisces is ending yep. and the age of aquarius is now manifesting and just like there's no clear-cut demarcation from night to day it's a gradual progression from light 
to dark and back from dark to light. Same thing goes from this progression that we've been on for the past, you know, 2000 to 2500 years, we've been in this age of Pisces. And I think that that age was all about scarcity. Something happened that really shook up the, the globe. And that, that being said is something programmed an idea into the, the mass consciousness that there's a limited supply, a limited supply of food, clothing, shelter, and resources. But now what's happening is now we're coming into this new age of, evol or of abundance because now we have an abundance of information. We have a now we're realizing in America alone, America throws away and wastes more food, enough food, I should say, to feed every, we could eradicate hunger on the planet with the resources in America. So we see that this old paradigm, this old age is, is breaking off and it's disintegrating and a new one is forming. And that old system is going to try, try, try to hold on because that's all they know. <laughs> And no matter how hard you try, you're not going to stop evolution. And that's what crypto is. Crypto is evolution. The internet is evolution. You can't st I did a, a research paper for a presentation uh, on the internet um, and how the internet is a living organism. It has all of the characteristics of a living organism. And so at this point, it cannot be destroyed. It is literally a digital virtual organism that has covered the entire planet. Almost like, um, what do they call what mushrooms? Mushrooms create a mycelium oh, or something like that? Mycelium network. Exactly. That's yeah, exactly like what of, the like, internet is. Like the state of Washington is basically just a big mycelium network of mushrooms. Like if exactly. you're under the, underneath the, uh, the soil, it's all connected with mushrooms. Right. <laughs> Oh yeah, haven't I heard that like you can pick psilocybin mushrooms like uh, in DC, like I think like in front of like one of the- oh, like, like Washington State and Oregon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because Oregon. it rains so much there um, that it's just like a perfect breeding ground for, for, for psilocybin mushrooms. Like yeah, you can just walk around in the park and you know, after it rains and you'll probably find some. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know yeah. Well, you gotta be careful with that. <laughs> oh, cause you might pick the wrong ones? Yeah. Yeah. So, man, it's just so exciting, you know. I just, I've had, again, growing up where I grew up, I actually grew up in a, I was, grew up Mormon. I grew up around Mormons and then I tried Mormonism actually when I was like uh, 18. So I went to the temple and all that weird shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and I've had a lot of conversations with my dad and I always find myself having these conversations with religious people. And I'll remind myself, like in the middle of the conversation, I'll be like, oh, what am I trying to do? I'm not, why am I trying to sell you on this new idea? I say, I'll talk to you in a hundred years. Because in a hundred years, we, in a hundred years, we will look back and laugh at ourselves for the sh weird shit that we used to believe in. Yep. <laughs> I think, man, I can't believe we used to kill each other. I can't believe we used to you know, bow down to these, uh, you know, these gods and things like that, when we'll realize, oh, we are, we are the gods, right? Exactly. We have the potential the whole time. Right. So it's just a game that we've been playing. Our consciousness has been playing so that we could self-realize that we were God. Because I believe that once we come to that realization, there's, there are greater levels above that. It's infinite. It never yeah. ends. It's just a big, uh, it's just a big game of leveling up. Right. What I think, you know. So I think, uh, man, I, I'm super grateful to you, man. i you've given me a lot of, uh, help and advice, especially with crypto. Um, I think that crypto allows us the freedom to dive deeper into the things that we're obviously passionate about, you know, um, esoteric stuff, aliens, these ancient civilizations that have just completely uh, deserted, but they're, the, the remnants are still there. So I think that that's why we're drawn to that type of stuff is uh, so that we, we are playing the game and we're consciously aware that we're playing the game while everybody else is still taking a nap, you know? Yep. <laughs> 
but it's, it's shifting right now, you know, more and more people are waking up and especially with all these millennials that grew up with the internet, you know, cause that's one thing that, you know, people like in right now, people that are in their twenties, even in their thirties, you know, those people grew up with something that their parents didn't have. Right. Information abundance. Absolutely. So that's, that's a game changer right now. You know, we might have to go through, you know, another generation before, you know, the whole world really wakes up because a lot of people are still stuck in the old ways. You know, a lot of yeah. people, are, you know, the average like 18 or 19 year old has more knowledge about social media and the internet and how to, how to use it as a resource than the average 50 or 60 year old. So yeah, it's just an evolution as the, the generations pass, it's going to change everything. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know the internet, it, the the internet as a technology has created more freedom and more abundance on the planet than any other technology before it. Yeah. And I believe that crypto will create more freedom and abundance than the internet. Yep, I agree. It's like the internet of money. Exactly. And then you know what else too about the internet? It's cool, man. It's like, cause I was, when I was growing up, um, you know, I was, I was in the, the, this uh, private school indoctrination camp and then they tried to tell us to, you know, to go, oh, these other people in, in, um, you know, on the other side of the planet, they're all bad because they believe in a different God. And, you know, they wear these funny towels on their heads and they're bad. They're terrorists. They're evil. They're all going to hell. And now it's like, I can jump on the internet and uh, I can connect with those people on the other side of the planet on Facebook and be like, well, these people are just normal, cool people just like us, you know? Yeah. You, you know, we were lied to. Right. So it's dissolving the boundaries, and it is um, part of the evolution of, you know, it's, it's like the, the global collective mind coming together. Kind of like how, you know, how like when birds are flying in that V shape, how do they know to, to, to maintain that perfect formation? It's like a collective consciousness. It's like wow. a fish swimming through the ocean in perfect uh, – Symmet symmetry, I think is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. That's a collective consciousness. How do they all know how to turn at the exact same second? It's a, it's a collectivity. Yeah. And that's what the internet and all this stuff is, is allowing us to do. And I think another thing too is that um, I think that we have the ability to be that collective consciousness without the internet. But first, we have to evolve and develop our psychic abilities. And that's Absolutely. another thing I think that's, that's suppressed is – I think everyone has these psychic abilities, the ability to astral project, the ability to develop your pineal gland and, um, you know, become more psychic. But that's another thing that's been suppressed um, in the United States. You know, they'll say um, in the, the Christian, the Christian private schools would say, oh, don't don't do that. That's Satanism. That's bad. Right. Or, you know, in the public schools, they, they will have absolutely no training at all about meditation, about astral projection, about incarnation. None of that is included. So you have to question, you know, OK. Uh, was that all that stuff purposely removed from the education system in order to suppress the evolution of human consciousness? Yeah. I, the answer is yes. Or was it ignorance? It may have been a combination of both. Yeah. It may have been, you know, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a combination of both. Yeah. Because a lot of knowledge was lost. Right. Global catastrophe. Um, so, it, it, yeah, I mean, ignorance or intentionally, who knows? Yeah. But I totally agree because I think that, like, this thing, this thing, I can have a seamless conversation with someone in China. It's not the phone. I'm literally having, it's telepathy. And I think like you said in the future is that we won't need it. What we have to do is we're creating things in the outer world first to reinforce what's really what it really is the underlying higher level awareness is that like right now me you and i we're having a seamless conversation we're hundreds of miles away from each other it's not it's a projection it's a creation of our own consciousness and soon i think with within a hundred years we'll be able to just we'll probably be meditating somewhere, you know, in our house, but boom, we'll be in a room together, literally. And it will feel just like it's real. Yeah. I mean, there's people that uh, claim to be able to astral project on command or on demand. Um, you know, there's, there's a place even in, uh, in Virginia, if I'm not mistaken, it's called the Monroe Institute. I know a lady that works there. Yeah. There's a guy, um, his name's, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Robert Monroe, um, yeah. but he, he was a, uh, you know, he wrote 
he wrote a book, a bunch of books on this, I think back in like the 50s or 60s about astral projection and all this stuff. And they actually started an institute where you can go and, and stay for like a week and they teach you how to astral project your consciousness and things like that. So, I mean, who knows, check that out. who knows if there's people on this planet right now that are both like really good at astral projection and they just astral project and they're like, oh shit, my homie's astral projected up into the fourth dimension too. I'm going to go say what's up to him in, this, in the astral world, you know? Yeah. I mean, I got to believe that's true, man. Cause I, I know that there's a lot of folks in India, a lot of the gurus and people like that, that just go live in caves, you know, for years and years and years. Yeah. They grow up with it. Right. And so I guess for me is it kind of goes back to everything happens for a reason. So let's say a child is born in India in just a shitty outer circumstance, just total poverty like we couldn't understand i mean just literally human shit on the road you know and they got to think to themselves this sucks so i'm going to go into the mountains and i'm going to just spend my life meditating because meditating sounds way better than just hanging out where i was right and over time you know you're hanging out with these gurus and they're teaching you what they know and you're meditating for hours a day your consciousness is going to project somewhere because I mean, uh, lately, in fact, since I got back from Vegas, I've been really experimenting with uh, like 5-HTP and these other sort of uh, chemicals before I go to sleep. And my dreams have been fucking nuts. Yeah, I've messed around with different herbal supplements and different things that help you have more vivid dreams and stuff like that. Um, there was even one thing I tried out called a biomat. Have you ever heard of a biomat? Oh yeah. But it's like, basically it's, um, um, what are the, the purple crystals called? Amethyst. Yeah. Amethyst. It's, it's a, basically a mat with an, an amethyst crystal mat. Yeah. When you plug it in and it, and it hits it with an energy and you're sleeping on top of this thing and this thing's sending amethyst crystal energy into your body while you're sleeping. And like, I, I tried it out several times and I've never, um, those were the most like vivid dreams I've ever had was when I was laying down on those things. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, I have a friend, uh, Corey Love. I don't know if you ever, there was one episode on Robin Big where he got some of these. They were, they're sheets. Do I have, I think I might've showed them to you once. They're these sheets. Uh huh. So what they are is essentially it's a two dimensional picture of a three dimensional form. Okay. Okay. So it's like if you drew a cube on a piece of paper, you know, oh, yeah. the sacred it, geometry. These are crystals. And so I have a bed set. I have hundreds of these that you put under your bed and it essentially acts as the same thing as like those biomats. And uh, yeah, some pretty incredible stuff. In fact, I have not put them under my bed since I moved into that house this year. I need to put those under the bed and really test my dreams. Yeah, a lot of people, man, they, they, they build their houses like with crystal grids integrated into them. You know, they, they build their meditation rooms with, with crystals like in the corner of each, uh, you know, in each corner and do all this stuff and, um, you know, different herbal supplements they, they burn sage yeah stuff like that because like you know in all these plants and things like there's molecules in these plants that help you become more psychic and help you connect you know to, to whatever else is out there uh you know there's all kinds of crazy stories about people that that practice all these meditations and get data downloads all of a sudden and um you know even um that one guy that i followed uh, dr joe dispenza yeah the guy and studying it for like the last 20 years, the guy that meditated his spinal cord back to health after being hit by a Bronco with no surgery. <laughs> Who That's did? Joe did? Saying. Yeah. Joe Dispenza literally reformed his, his own? Yeah, that's, that's how he got into it. Um, he was doing a, a triathlon, and while he was riding the bike, a Bronco hit him. It completely destroyed his spine, and uh, he was told by the doctors, oh, you're going to have to have all these surgeries. You're going to have to have all these uh, metal rods and stuff put in your spine, uh, you know, over the next couple of years if you ever want to walk again and all this stuff. And, uh, well, basically what, what, what he claims is that he said no to the surgeries. He said, you know, I'm going to, to meditate, and I'm going to connect to whatever 
whatever intelligence is causing my heart to beat without me thinking about it. I'm going to yeah. connect to whatever intelligence is causing my food to digest without me thinking about it. And, uh, he, he claims that he rebuilt his spine through meditation and now he, he walks around perfectly fine and he's dedicated the last like 20 years of his life to studying, um, you know, the mechanism inside the brain and how it works and how to connect to higher consciousness and what is actually happening on the, the mechanical level and the, the molecular level when people start doing these meditations and when people start um, changing the frequencies in their brain. And when people, uh, you know, practice what, what they call the Kundalini meditation, where it's, yeah. you send the energy from your lower, your lowest chakra up to your pineal gland, which is piezoelectric, you know, your pineal gland has crystals in it. Just like when you spark a lighter, that lighter has crystals in it. It's piezoelectric. So when you hit it together, it boom, the flame burst out. That's exactly what happens in the pineal gland. When people do these meditations is they send the energy up piezoelectric effects and then you're releasing DMT, you're releasing melatonin, uh, you're releasing all these different chemicals, and you're having these multi-dimensional experiences and doing crazy shit. You're going, he says you're going, from, um, you're going from, from less particle to more wave, like that quantum physics experiment. Yeah. Going from particle to wave. So it all has to do with energies and frequencies and vibrations. Dang, dude, you just blew my mind. Crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, man, dang. Man, well, uh, man, I'll tell you what, for everybody that's going to watch this video, uh, man, you are the master when it comes to passive income streams with cryptocurrency. Uh, what are some of the, the projects that you're currently work on? So these people can get out and wake up and start making some of them passive incomes. All right, all right. Um, well, I mean, in a nutshell, you know, what I do is... I create multiple streams of residual Bitcoin. Um, I don't even get paid in fiat money anymore. Uh, all I get paid in now is, is cryptocurrency. I pulled almost all my money out of the banks. I'm down to one bank account. I only have one bank account left and it's because it was like a joint account that my parents created when I was like 13 years old. Um, but even US Bank, they, they shut down my account. They said, we no longer want to do service with you. And they, so they, nice. my bank broke up with me. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, basically I, I build multiple streams of residual Bitcoin and what I found to be the most stable and sustainable way to do this is to, um, is I invest into, into, uh, Bitcoin mining or cryptocurrency mining. And, and again, like I said earlier, mining is the process of confirming the transactions on the decentralized network. So we have to have miners in order for me to send money to you. There has to be mining. We have to, to, to confirm these transactions through mining. Um, and as these transactions are confirmed, more Bitcoin is produced. So I invest into mining companies. Um, so I, that in itself right there creates a little bit of residual income because I invested in the mining. Um, and then what I do is I help, I help build the companies I invest into via their affiliate programs. So I teach other people about the technology. I bring other people in and teach them how you can also get residual income from investing into mining and you know, how to set up your wallets how to, you know, how, how, to, how to game the system. Yeah. Uh, so the more investors I bring into the mining companies, they, they give me commissions on top of that as well. Um, and that's for anyone. Anyone can do that. So, you know, once I've got the residual streams of, of Bitcoin from building these mining companies, then, uh, you know, I can take a little bit of these profits and I can trade the markets. I can start investing into other cryptocurrencies because remember, there's a whole bunch of other cryptocurrencies now. Bitcoin was just the first one. Um, there's all kinds of new technologies coming out, all kinds of new cryptocurrencies that are solving different problems in the monetary system. Um, so, um, you know, you can trade these markets. They're very volatile. Um, you know, you can, some people just buy uh, the, the other coins and just hold them for the long term. Some people are actively trading these markets um, all throughout the day. You know, like day traders, how they do Forex trading where they set the stop losses and the, um, and the sell orders and they, they do that whole deal, the candlestick charts. You can do that with cryptocurrency. And it's more volatile than, than the stock market. It's more volatile than the Forex market. So the, the potential to earn is even bigger. Um, and then, uh, I mean, that's kind of what I do in a nutshell, you know, um, aside from teaching people how to um, use the, the technology, you know, I'm, I'm really big into social media marketing and, um, you know, YouTubing, um, you know, teaching other people how to actually become more confident and how to speak in front of a camera and how to connect with other people through social media, how to brand yourself on social media. 
Um, you know, that's all included in, in, in what I teach through, through my social media platforms. So it's kind of like um, a little combination of the personal development, the social media coaching combined with this whole cryptocurrency thing. Yeah. Nice, man. And uh, how can they find you? Um, you just type in my name, Sean Logan, type it into YouTube. I've got over like 200 videos on there now, I think. So, or uh, my, my Facebook extension is just Sean Logan Marketing if you want to uh, connect with me and ask me any questions about this stuff. But uh, definitely highly recommend getting involved in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. At least just start learning about the technology because you will be way ahead of 99% of the people on this planet if you start doing this. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, man, thanks a lot for uh, linking up today, man. It was a pleasure, man. Talking, I, I enjoy talking about that crazy stuff, man. I'm big into that stuff. Yep. Yeah, man. We'll have to, uh, in the future, go to some of those Joe Dispenza. I know you just recently got back from one, but uh, see what's up with that Monroe Institute. I met a lady that uh, has worked with him for a long time at Psy7 uh, just last month. So uh, after having this conversation, it's more something's pointing in the direction of checking out that Monroe. and what Yeah, that, that, would, that would be a, a, an experience, definitely, to go down there. Yeah. I think it's only like a couple thousand bucks to stay there for a week. Oh, dude, that's nothing, yeah. dude. That's a fraction of a crypto, a fraction of a Bitcoin. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks a ton, man. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, man, thanks for having me on the show. Always good talking to you. I'll be in you touch. Well, buddy. Sounds good.